So Udemy, the learning platform, has rolled out a new AI functionality that you can add to your courses if you're an instructor there called Roleplay. So this video is all about Roleplay from the instructor perspective, also from the student perspective. So I'll run through what Roleplay is, what the experience is like for the student, and then as well for instructors how to add Roleplay to your own course. Now at the time of this recording on my screen, I have all courses on the Udemy platform that have Roleplay enabled. At the time of this recording is only 1,890 courses. So I decided to jump in and try role play and I've added role play to one of my most popular courses that is my Salesforce certified platform administrator course and I'm inside of the course builder here and I've added role play to one of the sections and one of the ideas or recommendations for role play is to add a role play curriculum item at the end of each section of your course. There's also a lot of resources from Udemy on how to build these. There's an FAQ and an introducing role play uh, like press release or article and here's the FAQ and then a guide on how to create them. And I'll link to those down below. But let me go through the setup of this is we have the name of the actual role play and then give the scenario. And so here I've given a scenario for this role play saying that you are a Salesforce administrator, a mid-sized tech company, sales team members unable to access an account. And then there's further details there. And the idea is to test the student's knowledge on the section that they just learned, the different concepts. And so this gives you the ability to give Udemy access to your microphone. You can answer questions from a prospective employee that's trying to access, in this instance, a Salesforce setting. And so the learner role is a Salesforce admin responsible for user management and security settings. And then as you set this up, then beyond the scenario, you set up the AI character customization and you can select or change a different character. I selected Alex here. I uh, gave him the name Alex, the character role, account executive, sales team member, and then personality and background. I've given uh, the personality. He's a high-performing sales rep concerned with an issue. And then the AI character's first line, giving an idea as to what Alex is to say, which is here. He's thanking me for hopping on the call and me being the student and the AI avatar being Alex, who is saying he can't access the Geneva Corp account in Salesforce anymore, given the scenario. And then the role play settings in the next tab here, and this gives you a preview as you progress through, the meeting title, this is an account access permission meeting, the role duration, 10 minutes long, and then the learner goals here, what we're trying to accomplish are to acknowledge Alex's frustration and reassure that I'll investigate and fix the issue and propose a clear solution and explain how this will restore access while maintaining security policies, okay? So now, I've already saved and published this, but if you preview this to see what the end user will see or the student will see then inside the curriculum for the course content, a pop-up modal pops up saying that this was generated with AI. And this is very similar, reminds me of Agent Force sales coaching functionality inside of Salesforce's Agent Force solution. And it's a role play here to be sure that the student has learned the material of the course. And so now we can either skip role play or start role play. And this landing page gives the guidance. And this is intended for the student to then read through and peruse and know like, okay, here's the role or the scenario that I am fulfilling. I'm a Salesforce administrator. This is who is contacting me and giving more details on that. And then my goals are that I need to ask at least two clarifying questions to determine what account Alex cannot access and what error or message they see acknowledge their frustration, reassure that it'll be investigated and fixed, and propose a clear solution, which would be based on what they've just learned. So I'm going to start the role play here and kind of role play and demonstrate this. Hi. Thanks for hopping on this call. I'm really worried. I can't access the Geneva Corp account in Salesforce anymore. It was visible last week, and now it says I don't have permission. What's going on? Okay, so first time you try this, you'll be prompted to allow access for you to me to access your microphone. And I'm not tapped to speak yet, so I'm talking to you and not talking to Alex, but here are my role play guide. I need to acknowledge his frustration, reassure that I'll investigate and fix the access issue. I can ask at least two clarifying questions to determine what account Alex cannot access, what error message they see, and then propose a clear solution. So now I'm gonna kind of walk this through and see how I do. I might interject some humor as well to see if Alex stays on topic or if he grows frustrated. 
and we'll kind of go from there. And then also we can toggle between the audio or chat interface and I can do chat instead of voice if I don't want to use my microphone. And then also I can toggle on and off the role play guide to go out Alex full screen or Alex on the side and then the role play guide here. And then I can also see more details on the scenario and the character that I'm interacting with. So now I'm going to tap to speak and I'm going to keep in mind my goals for this conversation. There'll be some back and forth as well in this role play. All right, Alex, thanks for calling today. And I understand here your frustration with not being able to access the account. I want to reassure you that I'm going to fix your issue. And can you tell me clearly which account you can't access and how you're trying to make access with that account record? And so now Thank he's you going to respond. for understanding. It's the Geneva Corp account I can't access. I used to be able to view it in Salesforce under accounts, but now when I try to open it, it just says I don't have permission anymore. No idea what changed. I really need this sorted out quickly as I'm working on closing a deal there. Okay, so now I can ask some clarifying questions. He's already told me how he's accessing by accessing under accounts. And so I'm gonna ask him to do a search for it. All right, I understand that you used to find Geneva Corp under the Accounts tab. Have you tried to perform a search to locate it that way? And are you not able to see it at all? Yeah, I tried searching for it, but it doesn't come up in the results anymore. It's almost like it vanished. Before, I could just search for Geneva Corp and it would pop up right away. Now, nothing. All right, Alex, I'll look into that. And after searching Salesforce, I see that the account manager has been changed over to Betty. And it looks like Betty has changed that account over to herself. Is it your understanding that you should still be the account manager or has that been transferred to Betty? Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, that's news to me. As far as I know, I'm still supposed to be managing Geneva Corp. I wasn't told about any changes. If it's been reassigned to Betty, I'd like to understand why, and if there's still a way for me to collaborate on it, because I've already made a lot of progress with them. All right, Alex, I apologize for the inconvenience. As a preliminary step, I'm going to revert account ownership back to you, and then I'm going to reach out to yours and Betty's manager to resolve who should be the account owner. And then as well, regardless of who is the owner, the other person should be able to at least see the account. So I'm also going to address the org-wide default settings on the account object. That's kind of a technical thing behind the scenes in Salesforce. Doesn't concern you so much, but just let, letting you know that this will be resolved satisfactorily so that all team members all team members should be able to access this account and that you'll retain ownership as long as your manager agrees. How does that sound? That sounds like a solid plan. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking those steps to straighten this out. Please keep me in the loop on what the manager says. But for now, I'm relieved that I'll have access again to keep things moving. Thanks for jumping on this so quickly. All right, so now I'm going to interject a little bit of humor and see if he stays professional and stays on task or if I can derail the conversation or fluster him, okay? Thanks, Alex. And one last question for you. Where did you get that sweater? It's epic. Haha, <laughs> thanks. But more importantly, I really appreciate you sorting out the account issue. Let me know if I need to do anything else. So it looks like Udemy's placed some guardrails in place to keep their role play agents on track. And then to end this, we can just click end role play. And that's from the end user perspective as far as really reinforcing the learning. And then in the creation process of creating a new role play, then I can go back to my curriculum and walk through the process of adding this to other sections of my course. And I'm going to do this through each of the sections of this particular course. And then this will presumably get my course added to this list of role play enabled courses. And it's another, I think, valuable learning resource to reinforce what students have learned at the end of di different sections of a course. And so I'm going to go in here and add one to this next knowledge area and section of this particular certification course which has to do with Object Manager and Lightning App Builder. And so I'm adding a curriculum item and selecting Role Play, which is currently in beta. And then the process here is I need to enter in a title. And so after this particular section, students have learned how to create objects inside of Salesforce. So I'm going to have this be a Role Play title of designing a custom warranty object. So you enter the title there 
add a role play, and then there's several more steps here that then you had to click the pencil icon, and this gets you into the interface to start entering in the details, first of which is the scenario. And I've used AI and trained a custom GPT, and built a custom GPT to build these role plays, and I'll add a link to that custom GPT down below as well, so you can use that to leverage for creating your own role play items inside your own Udemy courses if you're an instructor. And so now it's just a matter of copy and pasting based on the curriculum of the course, the content of the course, and the FAQ, the introducing role play, and the how to create role play instructions from this custom GPT, the resulting scenario here. And then I can remove the numbering and change any sort of formatting. The learner role, I'll put that in place. The next tab beyond plan role play is AI character customization. And so here's where I can select an avatar. I could switch this up so that they're not dealing with Alex all the time, but someone else. So now I'm gonna go with Jordan and I'm gonna select an avatar here. And let's say that this is Jordan and then his role, I'm gonna say he's customer service manager. And then the personality and background, this is where we describe the AI character's personality, background, and motivations. So here is Jordan's personality and background. And then next up will be their first line. And this would be the problem that they're reporting. And previously it was access to an account record with Alex. So now Jordan's issue is, thanks for meeting with me. Our team really needs a better way to track product warranties in Salesforce. Right now we're using spreadsheets and it's a mess. I have some ideas, but I'd love to hear how we can set this up in Salesforce. What do you suggest? And once again, this is all relevant to what they've just been through in learning in your course for that particular section. So beyond this, then the next is the role play settings and the meeting title. I'm gonna give this a title of warranty tracking requirements, an estimated length of 10 minutes. And then the meeting goals, I can add goals here. And usually you wanna do two or three goals here. I'm gonna add more and you see this update on the right as you add the goals. So it's pretty involved in building out a good scenario and a good role play, but I think it will really strengthen the learner's understanding because they got to explain an answer based on what knowledge they've just acquired and it will help identify gaps in their knowledge and they'll presumably go back and address those weak areas here. So I've filled in the three learner goals here. So once all that's filled in, then I can click save and I can also preview, see what that's like. And then if I'm satisfied with that, I can publish that to the course and then that becomes available to learners to experience. But I'm gonna preview this to see and be sure that this is working correctly and demonstrate another example after having built this one out and demoing how to build this out. And then I can also say, don't show this modal again and then X that out. So here's my scenario that I can start the role play with. And then we should have Jordan on screen. Thanks for meeting with me. Our team really needs a better way to track product warranties in Salesforce. Right now we're using spreadsheets and it's a mess. I have some ideas, but I'd love to hear how we can set this up in Salesforce. What do you suggest? And so I guess uh, all of the avatars potentially are British. So there's a strong British accent, so it's kind of interesting. I'm going to tap, tap to speak here. So the issue is better way to track product warranties. They're using spreadsheets and it's a mess. So I'm gonna ask clarifying questions and then once again, acknowledge the needs, propose a solution. All right, Jordan, thanks for letting me know about how you're trying to track things with the spreadsheet. I understand you're wanting to get this into Salesforce. So tell me more about the warranty information that needs tracking. What would the warranty period be? That, and do you need to track expiration dates? And would these be related to assets or products? And how is your service team using that information? Great questions. So we absolutely need to track the warranty period and its expiration date. Those are key. We also need to link the warranty to specific assets or products since they are tied to what the customer bought. As for the service team, they often reference this info when responding to customer inquiries or processing warranty claims. It's really about being able to answer, is that still under warranty? quickly and accurately. So here, I'm not talking uh, to Jordan right now, but to you, and I kind of got on the nose here with the proposed solution, giving some ideas as to what to convey and kind of leave it up to you as to how specific or on the nose or leaving it up to the interpretation of the student as to what the answer would be. But I'm gonna tap to speak again to follow up with a warranty custom object recommendation. 
All right, Jordan, thanks for that feedback. I think what we need to approach this with is a custom object for warranty. And some of the key fields that you mentioned uh, would be expiration date. And then as well, I think we'll relate that to assets, perhaps accounts. And you mentioned as well products. And so we need to be flexible in what we can relate it to. And so I'm going to leave that kind of open-ended until we can have further meetings and discussion on exactly what the requirements would be. But from there, I think once we figure out what fields are needed and what objects it's related to, we would need to address the page layouts and what key fields are needed to be at the top, for example, in the lightning page. And so how does that sound as far as how to progress and uh, approach this solution? And would you be agreeable to being a stakeholder? That sounds fantastic. I really like the idea of having a custom warranty object with those relationships. You're right about needing flexibility there. And yeah, designing a lightning page with the key fields easily visible sounds like exactly what we need to help the team. I'd be more than happy to be a stakeholder in this process and provide input as things take shape. Thanks for laying it out so clearly. All right, so I'm going to end the role play, and then I'm going to publish this and go ahead and add this to my course as well. And, and then I'm going to wash, rinse, repeat, and do this until I'm through all the different sections of the course. And then that course will be added to the list of those with role play and Udemy. So be sure and check out role play and Udemy and check out the custom GPT that I've created for helping you to create those in your own course. If you're a student, good luck with navigating role play. Give me feedback on what works or doesn't for effective role play as far as what you're looking for. Be sure and leave a comment down below as to what you're wanting to learn next as well. And if you're wanting to learn more about generative AI or Salesforce or Agent Force, be sure and check out Rapid Reskill. That is our learning platform where we teach all things AI and Salesforce related. And then as well, our parent company of Velza. That's where we do Salesforce and AI implementations as well. Links once again down below in the description. And I'll see you there.